hopefully we're back. It is still that bug from back in the day that they've never bothered to fix that when uh when you come back from being disconnected like that that a lot of times your uh your sound gets so scuffed and the only way to fix it is to completely end and restart your stream which means where we were at about 50 viewers what's more than likely going to happen is depending on how the numbers go um it'll either show the numbers as being like 75 or 100 people because it double counts um and then after a little bit it will suddenly drop down to like 30 because a whole bunch of people get left behind who are lurking um Brub is a good strategist just enough for him, uh, Rebel and him, that we work together well. That was quite a move. So my other hope is that, um... If I befriend them, that they'll teach me irrigation. My parents want me to get out more. They think I spend too much time with my carvings. And I've come to establish that there's a little white icon next to stuff like giving items and that, that I believe is telling me that it's available or not. That, like, the person will effectively reciprocate or not. And I think she likes me because we had a, um, a cooking competition and I figured out she was the judge and gave her what she wanted. Because it was a secret who the judge was. Burning Sun grabbing the first... Yeah, I get pretty salty about the situation going on Clouds Garden, with the um, the disconnection. Now, granted, that's been it's been a number of months since I've had that issue happen. Oh, it also resets the ad, so give me a moment, because you're going to get another round of ads, because Twitch disconnected it. So, get mad at Twitch about that. I can't do anything about it. Because what it does is it sees the stream having started over, and so the pre-rolls get turned back on until I run the next ad break. And with the scheduler, it does it five minutes after start. Don't forget to do some fishing. Yeah, I need to do some fishing. I'm trying to, um... It's the classic thing. There's about 30 things I want to do and not enough time. Yeah, so where it says where we have 65 viewers, more than likely we really actually have about 32 to 35 viewers. Um, and that's probably the double counting from the stream dropping. Or maybe a bunch of people saw the notification jump in. One can hope. Yeah, it's like 31. Oh no, I don't need to give Rawbot a kick. It's because I have a cooldown on how often it'll do the play command. Um, so it's still in that cooldown. But Rawbot should still be fine. Because if I don't put the cooldown, then what happens is as people put in play, Rollbot would respond to each and every one of them, and it would get super spammy. Alright, so I'm going to quickly do as well. This is running. I'm going to quickly stretch my legs. I'll be back in just a minute. So thanks so much for everyone who's been tuning in. has been lurking, chatting, following, subscribing, doing the bits, hosts, donos, and the raids. It all helps. I really do appreciate it. And I do hope you're enjoying the stream so far. I'll be back in a moment.
<laughs> Apparently I got eliminated in Dartress. Oh, now it's a fair race. Cause because Rollbot and me are already not in it. I see. That's fair. There was um I saw a GIF earlier today that was like a keyboard and it was like pushing this giant red button at the bottom right corner labeled cheat. I still need to get the um the super scuff cave painting raw um and make that into an emote. I think we're actually going to do that. The downside is the super scuff raw emote like so another emote has to die for that to happen. So I'm going to have to just look at what emote gets used at least and no matter which one I choose someone's going to be upset about it. Um wait what happened? Uh we just um Stream dropped for a minute, and so I had to stop and start the stream because the audio got scuffed. It's a bug on Twitch. Bye, Darstrider. Caught the lip at the end. Um, so because of it, it reset the ad timer, so I got a second round of ads. Which, there's nothing I can do about it. I can't tell it to skip a round of ads or anything like that. It's the only way you get extra ads... Um when you do mid-rolls, is if the stream goes down entirely. Alright, in first place we got Burning Sun, and then Sniper Spice in second, and everyone else was eliminated. Okay. Uh, versus pre-rolls, if you get disconnected, you get no round of ads. If, um, like, basically if anything happens not perfectly aligned with what you want, you get no round of ads with, um, with pre-rolls. Not counting if you're subbed or get Twitch Turbo or the many other ways you can get rid of that stuff. Thank you for the follow. Welcome to the stream. And I'm mostly here looking for the copper. Because one of these rooms up ahead, this is actually the room. This room here, I can't go farther until I, um, Get copper tools. Let's see real fast if I can't get some more copper real quick. Another fast travel here. Uh, there's stomp your feet not too far. See the next closest one. A cooler version of Stardew Valley. Holy heck. Um, I wouldn't say cooler, but a different take on it. Like one, I wouldn't say one's inherently better than the other. I would like definitely say, for at least what I've seen, Stardew Valley has more like replay value. pushing my luck going this way but I absolutely am enjoying this game and I have enjoyed Stardew Valley as well I'm also looking forward to I need to check that the um the summer update for Coral Island is right around the corner so I'm looking forward to that as well oh 
this room. Um, I believe if I go near the bottom of this, we can cut across here real fast. Yeah, and there's the fast travel. Like, don't get me wrong, with a lot of these games, I would say Coral Island is actually one of the ones with the least depth to it. But one of the ones that I feel has the highest level of polish to it. The downside is they're doing early access and releasing, like, they'll do two major updates per season to get, like, the festivals and all that. And so, you play through and you finish the seasons they've done... And while the art seasons are functional, you're not motivated to play the art seasons because there's just no festivals or events. Um, and you can't finish the relationships with anyone yet in Coral Island. That it's just... It's it's hard to feel invested that. Am I going to play It's a Wonderful Life Harvest Moon remake when it comes out? Um, Story of the Seasons? Um, Probably as long as it's on PC. No, we're not going to have time to do all that. I believe it's coming out on PC. Cuz that's a big thing. I won't I won't pick up a console system when I already have a gaming computer. And that's not like elitism about PC gaming versus console or anything like that. If I'm going to plunk down a bunch of money on a system, that's the system I'm going to use. If something wants to only be available on a different system, well, fortunately, there's a very large number of games out there for me to play, and I can ignore its existence and kind of punish it for not being on the platforms I want it to be on. All right. Man, I'm down. I, like, very genuinely, Harvest Moon is arguably one of the very first slice of lifestyle games out there. Uh, Blackbear says, usually I have the opposite problem, where everything comes on PC first, and my computer can barely run a game, like Roots of Pacha. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's one thing when it comes out in one place, then another place, that's fine. Like, I get it, there's dev cycles and all that that go into that. Like, there's there's reasons that makes sense. Um, But it's a very different thing when they're like, this is a whatever exclusive for one year, where it's like, okay, you very deliberately have chosen to not make this available on other platforms. And usually it's like a money deal or something like that, or they've been paid for exclusivity or whatever. Um, and that's a business practice I want to go out of my way to not support. Because I don't like exclusives anything. Um, yeah, it's fine. Hey, Angel of Life, how's it going? A gift from the Yukans. If you like fresh fish as much as us, um, you might like this recipe too. A sushi recipe. And Aker finished her work researching stuff. Let's drop off the gemstones in here. What else do I need? Let's take you and drop you down there. That's all fine. Let's go catch Acre. Ada always says, I'm too serious with my rocks. But I knew Copper was hiding something. So first, I warmed them up a bit. And then, when they weren't looking, I hit them with my rock hammer. Crow will add a better anvil to our station. 
And then maybe we'll be able to work with these metals. Come browse the new tools when he's done. Okay, so they're upgrading our stuff. So it is going into foraging. Um, are you going to finish this game before dropping it? Or playing it uh, until you get bored? So what's probably going to happen is I'm going to be mixing some other games in while still playing this. Um, because I do intend to like playing through this and finishing out the game. Um, like I don't know if we'll like 100% the game, but at least finish whatever the main storyline is. Um, and that's just because often when, unfortunately, one of the realities of streaming is a lot of times you start like working on 100%ing a game, unless it's a game you main in or whatever, then people end up really dropping off very quickly. So you kind of get pressured into doing that. I always liked watching birds. Sometimes I can fly like them in my dreams. But, um, it's a realistic... Yeah, 100% that would be a feat. So, many to befriend. Oh yeah, that's not actually that big a deal. Compared to games like Stardew Valley, we did the Stardew Valley Expanded um, mod and the Stardew Valley um, Ridgeside Village mod. And granted, we didn't go through everyone in that one, but that's like 60, 70 people to, you know, get things. When Era was born, she stole my heart, but she stole Nari's too. Ah. Wild pineapple. Tends your make your mouth hurt if you eat a lot. Yes, it does. Huh. We haven't seen pineapple. But, um... Sorry, I'm being distracted by a couple things. But yeah, no, it's just kind of one of the things that ends up when you go to 100% of game. It's like, okay, I need to grow all the crops. Sometimes that's not a big deal. Like, you just go to the person, you punk down one of each crop. Easy peasy, you get done in the normal time frame. Um, other times it'll be like, you need to catch all the fish, and a bunch of them are hidden. Um, which starts to get into the, I need to check the wiki territory. Like, there's not an in-game way other than fish all the places during all the weathers doing all the things to like figure it out and then when it gets really rough when you're missing just one or two fish and then figure out it's like okay what season what weather conditions what hours did I miss the fish um so actually I really appreciate a lot of the games that have that kind of mechanic nowadays they have ways in game to straight up find that stuff out like there will be dialogue where the one person will be like oh those sea bass you can you gotta really watch, they only show up during the spring. Or they'll have like an almanac you can check inside the game or whatever. And like I do enjoy some of the discovery of that kind of stuff. It's just there's a certain point where it's like, okay, I understand discovery is cool and all that. But no, really. I don't, I don't have the time I used to to sit there and just play the game season out season, and it gets tedious sometimes. Where you're like, okay, let me, let me just sit here and grind fishing, you know, with no idea where to get stuff for the next five, like the next in-game year and a half, trying to suss out that one fish I'm missing. So I do like that some of them, they'll do stuff like, they'll be like, these are the spring fish. Like, that's actually one of the things I felt Sun Haven did really well for getting all the fish from the museum. They'll be like, here's the spring fish. Um, and they don't have it where it's like certain hour days or anything. It's just strictly on like this area, that area, or that area. There's like three or four areas you can catch fish. And you won't know which area they're found in. Just that you find them during that season. Um, so it's really not bad. Have you discovered any new areas behind the Savannah Beach Jungle and Forest? Um, I have not yet. I've also not really noticed a good place for there to be the entrance for a new area. 
That said, when you look at the Savannah Beach Jungle and Forest, that's not an unusual size for a lot of these styles of games. There's definitely ones that are bigger, like Sunhaven is definitely a much bigger game. But like, that would be comparable in size to say like Coral Island or Stardew Valley, this game itself. Um, like that's not an unusual size. Because I think a big thing that's the appeal of these games is usually you are like in a small community you know, doing that whole thing. That's not some giant grand world thing going on. Oh, I should check in my animals. Because I'm starting to wonder if maybe it's when the Ibex gets happy enough that we'll, um, get whatever's needed to make Mill happy. Mel capping, cause like Oh, interesting. So I can breed them to get better ones. Like it says, by the way, not gonna spoil, but there was an area I missed um in one of the other places you can visit because it didn't look like anything. Interesting. All right, so I do think let's look at our boars. Is there an easy way to go through? I do think we take where we have our three boars and we get rid of one of them. My suspicion is, no, we don't get rid of them. We'll just make the place bigger. My suspicion is we want to start like trying to breed the boar, like breed our animals up to get better ones. Because I just noticed they had stats that do seem to like, they have, like, generations and all that, so I'm assuming we can, like, breed them up for certain purposes and whatnot. Alright, so it's not looking like we got much in the way of produce up here on the trees yet. Um, alright, so let's put these two pumpkins in. Um, I have plenty of that. What materials am I missing for expanding the barn? Um, let's see... Pumpkins. Oh, I can't check because you're already doing something. Well, alright, that's fine. Yeah, and no, I'm not I'm not sure yet. But my thought is we upgrade the barn because it's at capacity right now anyways. So we upgrade the barn is the first thing. Um And then from there we can see what happens. I thought Zelk seemed familiar. I might him on my travels a long time ago. Yeah, no, it'll either be, like, getting multiple animals where... That was quite a move. Rack is my son, but we look more like siblings, don't we? They've already danced with you this week. Yep, now there's an upgrade. Um, I just don't have the materials for it. Can I, can I cross anywhere down here? Because I mentioned pineapples. And we have definitely not seen pineapples. And, you know, if we're talking about environments, pineapples would 100%. Oh, there we go. Because this is where um, we went the first date. Well, sort of date. Oh, well... There wasn't as much out here as they thought there would be. Oh, that's the area you missed? Yeah, so we actually had, um, in character, we ended up going there. Um... One of the events took us there.
Oh, there we go. Lots of copper today. Hey, Kitty Cartel, how's it going? Oh, need to eat something. I'm still kind of annoyed that after all that we're going to get just like regular metal working. <laughs> I was actually kind of hoping they'd do something a little bit, a little bit more like Neolithic kind of thing, like have us find some bones to some creature or whatever that were like really super durable, um, or something along that side. Just having it so it's like, oh, you found copper, it's like, aw, come on. I've done that one before. That's every one of these games, you get like a copper pickaxe or whatever. Just trying to make it a point to drop into these places. Snag a little bit of copper. Yeah, sure they don't uh, make metal tools in this area. Yeah, now we're like we're discovering it now. Which is the way all of it works. Like, don't get me wrong, there's there's lots of fudging in time in this game about what they did and did not have access to. Like we can brew beer and all that, which is definitely not something they knew how to do. But that's that's the first one I was like, aw, come on, there's ways you get around that. Like I said, they could they could shot like find some other type of stone that's even stronger, like you know, have instead of going like straight from, you know, stone to flint to obsidian. They could have had something in between like flint and obsidian that's tough or I'd even be fine if they wink wink hand wave that here's this really durable crystal material. There's no way they made tomato wine. Not not on purpose. <laughs> I would agree to you. There's no way they would consistently make, you know, tomato wine. Like having tomatoes ferment such that it became something drinkable or edible? Sure. But, like, to the point of calling it wine and not, like, some kind of tomato fermented slurry? Yeah. Because, I mean, they unintentionally fermented stuff all the time throughout history where... They just put stuff in storage, it wasn't contained well. And it ended up, you know, basically fermenting. Like, if they wanted to be more accurate, they would let us brew potatoes for vodka? I mean, I don't think they had even that back... Like, this is Neolithic times. I think any type of preparing proper liquors was not a thing that they would have access to yet. Like, the very, very basic fermenting of throw thing in a jar and let it let it go bad in a way that becomes alcoholic. Sure, that, that they could have. I mean, the game started where our technology level was a rock that we've chipped. Yeah, I can see it as, like, a human evolution game. Like, they were taking just, like, all the prehistoric times and, like, bunching it up into one giant cluster.
All right, not much today. Grab our fennel wine. Mmm, fennel wine. That's another deeply upsetting thing. Alright, so what do we got? Um, Juke is feeling inspired to make processing for easier. Era finished working on her idea. They still need 15,000 or 150,000 to get there. Kicker does like, mmm, fennel wine. That's as much like, ah, fennel wine, please, no. No, not that. Um, alright. So a couple people here that we need to talk to. I'm also bothered by it. it's like, oh, we want to do try metalworking. Okay, I'm just going to need to make a better anvil. I'm like, hang on a second. <laughs> Wait a second. Bring it back. The kitchen heat is actually helpful. You know, when you wet something and keep it cool in the summer, I did the same thing with the pots. A smaller one holds the food, while the larger one hold holds it, and in between, a mixture of sand and water. Crawl said he installed one in your house tonight. I think you'll like it. It's super, well, cool. This weather reminds me, reminds us to take time for ourselves. Oh, right. I've been meaning to talk to you. I'll never forget the first time a spirit spoke to me. Everything just felt right. Okay, so we have all these things that I have basically all the gems for them. Um, imbued with the power that draws fish to you. Imbued with the power that helps you stay hidden from fish longer. Imbued with the power that um, improves your charisma when talking to others. Imbued with the power that increases your walking and running speed. Imbued with the power uh, that increases the range of your torch. Imbued with the power that increases the chance that trees yield more wood. And then we have the other four. Why do I have a feeling that these are ones that I get from... Because the other ones I got from the tree or whatever. Alright, so you got you down here. Oh, there you go. Cool, he woke up right now. The way Mom makes thread is impressive, but I can tell it hurts her hands after a while. There has to be some kind of- are we gonna make a loom? Some kind of way to make the process that isn't so tedious. Make sure the wreck could help up- um, come up with something if we had the right materials. Bones and any fur. We talk about it later. Alright, so I need to save my- my boar's fur for a while. Oh, my bones shouldn't be hard at all. I have the um the fur cutting thing. The unit says it tastes more like licorice. I would definitely not agree with the assessment that fennel tastes like licorice. Is the internet lying again? They know that's against the law, right? You're not allowed to lie on the internet? This is a known fact. Okay, so we've got it to two. Yeah. 
You also disagree with that assessment. Yeah, it's like, you kind of go, did, did you try licorice before? Maybe different varieties have different flavors? Maybe. That is possible. Alright, so... I make the prickly pear into wine. Regional different kind of fuck flavor? You're not wrong. Um, okay. And now I feel like I'm going to need even more copper. Like, that's the thing, is I keep I keep going after more and more copper. I also need more wood and more hardwood. Uh, meanwhile, where is... Alright, they're in the main building. I get a little sad sometimes, especially this time of year. Ah, we can dance; it'll make it all better. Cause that's how that works. Yep, we're up to eight flowers or whatever. Um, well, what I think I'll do... So my choices are I can go and just mine a bunch, but we're kind of bottlenecked on what we can do with the mining. I can get a bunch of stuff like that. What I might do... Actually, let's, let's go to the jungle altar thing. Take a quick look at the jungle altar and see if there's anything like we can work on right away. Well, it really went from, that sucks. So anyways, yep, sometimes you just got to. Sometimes you just got a positive attitude. Here's whatever happens with that. Broccoli, mustard, and cabbage are all the same family, but there aren't similar at all. Yeah. Okay, so the ones we're close to is Rockpiler. They invented a place to store food for them and their animals. So we have to discover a granary. Um, a totem challenged, uh, challenged them to be shrewd. That's just going to be going through the caves. Um, we have to make cheese, that's a thing. Let's see. They aged and added spice to the food they preserved. They preserved their foods in sour water. They didn't know mustard was in a group in that group too. Um, they proudly named the many places they made. They perfected the quality of their cooking. They contained fire. So this one is the one I think we're working on right now. Or no, I think I think we're missing a material for this one. But this one we do have the thing to invent. Let's see. Oh, so this is making the sushi. This is um, just trading in general. And they started to fish in a new way. I probably have to fish to unlock that one. This is effectively just going through all the seasons. What lies beneath? Yeah, so both of those are going to be going into the caves. This is going to be giving more animals. They prospered enough to create rivers in their lands. Oh, okay, this is literally going to be tied to prosperity. So when we get enough prosperity, I will I will get the thing. The plants grew in a more resilient shape. All right. Okay. So nothing I can specifically work on other than I can certainly make a trade happen. That That's not a big deal. Wait, I've, I have traded. Maybe I have to trade through um, the one guy in town.
because we traded for the um the barley so I think we need to fish some because it can fish to get these I can then grill the fish Ooh, that you're a tough one Discovered a red eye. And time does advance while I'm doing this, so it's not like I'm extending the day a ridiculous amount of time or something like that. My favorite example is tomatoes and potatoes come from the same family. Tomatoes and potatoes come from the same thing. I mean, it can be surprised at how much similarity the plants can have. Like, there's a whole bunch of plants that come from the same family as the nightshade, like peppers and tomatoes and all that. check to see oh I bet you I need to grab the seaweed for um sushi we haven't seen rice yet that's not my house I only do that all the time compote any fish. Wouldn't they're playing in any DLC to this game? Maybe. Roasted fish. How good is roasted fish for our energy? Plus one to fish spawn. Okay. Yeah, so I think I need to do some fishing. I also believe what I need to do is, between the fishing, that is, I need to start cooking some of these recipes. Because I think two of the things that, um, at the shrine or whatever it is, are going to depend on that. I'm also curious of what I can do to, um, advance fishing. Because I have a whole leveling mechanic with the growing stuff. I can only assume there's one with fishing as well.
Alright, one more and we'll see what we need to do for the sushi recipe. still not my house no matter how many times I walk into this place it's still not my house so any fi fish seaweed and wild rice we have not encountered rice of any kind so we can't do that we do have stuff with just the seaweed. Any fish and oregano is a recipe. I think you have oregano just sitting around. Any new plants in the savannah? Uh, we got a bunch. Every season they change. On um, that said, there could be more new ones that I'm unaware of. Um, give me the other oregano too. Because we'll cook with that. Granted, it's possible I've missed some. Mediterranean grilled fish. Plus one to fish catching. Thank you, Poi T, for subscribing for 18 months. Thank you, Poi, for the tier one. Let's see. Tier one sub. You've been subbed to the channel for 18 months, a year and a half. A year and a half, a real long time, and I really do appreciate that continued support. It does mean so much. So thank you so much for continuing to support the channel. It means a lot. Um, and I do hope you're enjoying the stream, and you're hoping your advertisement-free viewing as well as access to the emotes. I also hope things have been going good for you. All right, so we're slowly working our way up. It's fine. Yeah, it definitely seems like the fall we have not done nearly as well in our in our leveling and getting good with crops and all that. I'm keeping all that food on me to use for energy. Because it's like okay in value, but not enough that I want to spend it all. All right, so our prickly pears are starting to pick up a little bit. I think the only reason why last season we were so lucrative is we had two full seasons of tomatoes to work with that we leaned in really hard on. Versus this season, the only one I was carryover was the butternut squash, and then there was the, um, I think the peppers, but we didn't get the peppers to the very end of last season. I think you're able to make strawberry jam. Um, I can make strawberry juice, but um, strawberries are out of season. Those are last season. They're no longer growable this season. I'm wondering if the thing where we get better at fishing that they hinted at is going to be fishing nets. For 
strawberry wine. Yeah, we made strawberry wine. Um, okay, so I got a bunch of those. I don't think... I can actually dry them. Right, but I, I don't I don't have strawberries. I do agree, the things you are saying are factual, but I also don't have the things that you are saying anymore. That was summer, we're in fall. Oh, pepper. Oh, I wasn't expecting horns to be a thing again here. <laughs> Time travel? Uh, wrong game. That's Last Epoch you're thinking about. Alright, so we'll drop the fur there. We'll put that there. The rest of that can sit here for right now. So many. Why do some crops say harvest in question mark, question mark? Basically, my character doesn't know enough about the plant to know when I should expect it to be harvestable. Um, that goes into the whole knowledge thing is like, you know, the quality of the crop I get is affected by the knowledge. Knowing when it's going to be harvestable is affected by my knowledge. Stuff like that. I actually think it's a pretty decent way of having a leveling mechanic based on the individual crops. But you also notice some of the crops that when I grow them, it'll label them as wild even though I'm growing them in the farm. It just basically, my character doesn't know enough about them, so you can almost imagine they just threw some seeds on the ground and hoped for the best. Um, versus, like, having grown them for a while, being like, ah, no, okay, I know how much I need to water this, that kind of thing. Alright. So, the tool station is done. I need more fur for that. And I don't have enough prosperity for the other one. Gotcha. Thanks, Strider. Garrick and Era like to think about problems. I like to hammer them into submission. Okay. So we can upgrade our watering can for 40 copper. <sighs> Alright. We're, we're doing that one. Yeah, that's the same dialogue she always says. Alright, so I need a lot more copper. Like, a lot more copper. I should have checked the actual price before I ran off, but it's fine. Oh, I also wanted to check where is... Carol, where are you at, buddy? Prawl, not Carol. Prawl, where are you at, buddy? Um, to the next ad break hits. If you look at the top here, I actually have the timer that shows how long it is. Oh, it's off center. No, that's odd to fix that. Um, Gerald always uh, claims he's helping hunters, but I only ever see him playing music. So you need plant fiber to upgrade that. That's fine. We'll get that over time. So I need more copper. 
and I need plant fiber. It looks like the hoe and the um the scythe will get improvements. So my guess is for both of those it'll just be better area coverage. Just trying to grab whatever we can. Oh, I mean, yeah, I was just thinking the same thing, Michigan. I was like, oh, I should probably be grabbing the seaweed, shouldn't I? I still don't know where I can find ri rice, though. That's fine. I'm not gonna run the whole way back. I still don't know where I can, uh, can find um, rice, though. One of the things I think I need to start breeding the animals for is they had a stat for the animal's run speed. And I can see that partly tying into the race thing, I can also see that tying into me running around on the map. Um, that it would increase its movement speed. So I can breed generations of boar to get the fastest boar. Yeah, normally rice is in very wet climates. Um, let's see. I could actually see it a thing being a thing that what they might do is that inside a place like this there might be an area that's um Well let's see. Because they have all the seed types, but some ingredients you need um, for some recipes aren't there. Well, it could be that, um, with like the rice, for example, maybe, that there's a place on the map you can find it, maybe? That isn't, isn't specifically someplace you get the seeds for. Like, you know, there's certain herbs in that you can't grow yourself, but you can locate. It could be one of those kind of things. Um, so I could see that you get into a certain place, like, in here... That there's like, you know, not a bog, but like just a wet place. That, um, that it could grow. That you go and pick it when you need them. Or it could be locked behind a certain tier of prosperity, that kind of thing. Oh, not here. We, we walk back. I guess it's supposed to be since I'm um, supposed to be pregnant, you can't grow rice. Yeah, I don't know enough about growing rice. Like, I, if I remember correctly, typically you kind of grow rice in like a wet field kind of situation. But that is my not really knowing about it understanding. Like, that could just be kind of like the harvest phase is that you flood the field, the rice floats, and then you collect the rice. Like, I don't, I don't honestly know. the way yeah that's way back there so we won't see more copper in that direction do I know they grow in water but harvesting is very tedious process by hand 
Uh, more than any other type of grain. Yeah, I know. I know rice is supposed to be very laborious. All right, and it's going to be about that time, so I'm just going to quickly check no copper here. Um, for the next round for ads to happen, so bear with me. We're going to go ahead and get the marbles back on stream, because, uh, you know, we just do this for the ad breaks. And for those who go, oh my god, there's an ad every ten minutes. There, There's not, I assure you. There's an ad every hour. The only exception is, like, where we had, um... We had the stream go down, that reset the timer, which sucks. But, um, that is, that is just Twitch these days. And as much as I don't like it, the reality is, Twitch makes a heck of a lot more money off the ads than it does off the subs and all that kind of stuff, so it's gonna do it. It's just the nature of content, content providing nowadays. Like, you even look at stuff like Netflix and Disney+, Plus, and now they have, like, their normal tier for, um, content. You still get ads and you pay for it. Um, and then you can just pay more to have no ads. Um, I'm not saying that's a good thing in any stretch of the reality. It's just the nature of that beast, unfortunately. But thank you so much for everyone who's been tuning in, has been lurking, chatting, following, subscribing to the bits, hosts, donos, and the raids. It helps. I really do appreciate it. I do hope you've been enjoying the stream so far. Um, and as a reminder, the plan is that what I'm probably going to do is get to about the point that we um, we do where I eat the eat my dinner and everything, because I do stream for 11 hours, so about halfway through the stream, uh, usually what I typically end up doing is I will um, I'll take about five minutes away from the stream to you know make that food happen. Uh, so I think what we'll do is once we get to that point and I eat my food, we'll switch over to Project Zomboid where we'll be playing on Undead Barons. Uh, Undead Baron's Project Zomboid server, it's light RP, which means um, you will establish a character. Yeah, we believe... Yes. Yeah, that'll be more likely what we end up doing is when we hit the five minute break, uh, we'll do words on stream, is what the plan is. I also have an away screen now that rotates through clips and all that, and I do plan on mixing that in. Um, but I think for the big break, when I say big, five minutes-ish, um, break. I do think we'll keep that to words on stream for the most part. How is no one patchy as much as you're going back and forth? But, um... But, yeah. But, um, when we're playing on Undead Baron's multiplayer server, so it is light RP, which doesn't mean I have to do, like, the whole value of your life and all that kind of stuff that you have in what's known as hard RP. Um, so you don't have to, like be very, very committed to the character and avoid meta at all costs and all that kind of stuff. Um, it's far more casual than that. Uh, the Basically, the thing is, if I thematically set up a character, I should kind of just stay as best I can in the theme of the character. But that's pretty much it. Um, that said, it is a multiplayer server that people can apply to be on. You're not applying on my Discord. It's not my server. I'm joining someone else's. I'm going to be on Dead Baron server. So you can apply to join there, and you'd be able to play whenever I play there. I mean, you'd be able to play whenever you want. But when I play there, it'd be one of the first opportunities people have to play multiplayer games with me. Um, that said, obey the rules of that server. If you go and start breaking a bunch of rules and get yourself banned from their server because you're being a jerk, just consider that at breaking the rules here. The rules are very simple over there, and it mostly boils down to don't be a jerk. The point is, if you start causing problems for other communities that I'm a member of, like, if you're not welcome there, you're probably not going to be welcome here. Did that track is serious, Snoozer? Yeah, it can, it can sometimes get spicy. This one's definitely not been one. Like, you can get these waves, like, knock them back and all that. It's still not as bad as, like, the regular, like, NASCAR-style race course where it's just a circle. Um, because just like, okay, I'm just watching them go in a circle. Man, this one is, um... The whole idea is those meteors are supposed to do a bunch of stuff, but all in reality, it just kind of goes slow. Uh, you missed it? Yeah, it's all good. 
All right. So in first place, we have Michigander, followed by Illicit NZ. Then we have Lilac Wafers, followed by myself, Rollbot, Optional Quest, Darstrider, um, Squeezy. And then everyone else was eliminated by the course, which the way you get eliminated by that one is if those those waves that come by, um, they don't actually boost you forward. They boost you whatever direction you are already going. So if you start going backwards at any point from bouncing off and you get hit by a wave, it ends up sending you catapulting the wrong way off the end of the course. All right. Oh, and it's going down. That's right. This is the route to the savannah, but I might get lucky and snag a little bit more copper here. It's not looking good. That's fine. That's the other reason, like, I was sitting there, I was like, should I eat another thing? Food's like, no, we'll wait on the food just in case I don't end up needing it. Alright, the other thing I'm gonna need is wood, which I don't have the stamina for. Because I'm perpetually doing all things. I figured it had slightly energy, like slight amount of energy to just knock out a piece of wood or two or whatever I could get away with. Okay. Just trying to process anything and everything I can to make it into anything or any everything better I can. It's not what I want. I want to. All right. And let's see if that opened up any new recipes for us since I have a bunch of just random stuff on me. It's not my house. No matter how many times I walk in there, it's still not my house. <laughs> so you can make mixed salad, which I'm not. Um, I can make... I'm guessing that's nori? seaweed salad and I can make other foods vegetable stew Alright, drop off the fermented stuff, drop that off, drop off the wine, drop off the sunflower, the stew's not worth anything, go ahead and sell the wild dates. I'm pretty sure I lost a lot of value making those into food. That's fine, we'll keep it as, we'll keep those for our energy. It 
it sort of makes sense and it sort of doesn't make sense how much value you tend to lose by actually cooking food. All right. So we're getting pretty close to the point that I'll um, be able to finally make like the better kitchen, whatever it is inside. Things are waiting for more um more wool from my animals. Oh, big harvest day. Dry the peppers. Learn how squash take forever to grow. Yep. I think I'm just gonna sell the butternut squash as butternut squash, honestly. Drying them seemed to devalue them. I don't know that's actually true, but definitely didn't feel like a significant improvement. So we got the seaweed, I've got a bunch. But here's where you go. Uh, so that's a regular one? No, that definitely increased the value, never mind. So I can't do that. I can't juice it. I can ferment it, which would give it a little extra value. I can't do anything with that, I didn't think. Alright. Um, okay, so. Let's grab the beans and see if I can't make this into oil. Or powder. Okay. But they do grow over two seasons, so it sort of makes up for it. Yeah. It's just the whole thing of having to water it the whole time. Let's actually see if that's worth it. Okay, so we have that's 15, that's 18. So yeah, it is technically gaining value. Not a lot. But it's taking something almost worthless and making it slightly less worthless. It does seem like in this game you definitely are incentivized to train up a crop to get the full value. Which fall seeds do I have so far? Um, I have a bunch of them. I don't know if I have them all, but we have we have run around the entire area a number of times. So we got the garbanzo beans. Can you cook with bean patties? Yes, I can. Thank you the follow. Welcome to the stream. Um, alright. So I've got the dried stuff. We'll sell that. Because now I'm actually, like, cooking stuff. I meant make meals. Oh yeah, we used, um... We use them as just, like, regular beans for some stuff. You have pumpkins? Yeah, I've got pumpkins. They're growing in here somewhere. Either that or I already had my batch and I'm not growing more. But either way, I had pumpkin. Go ahead and pop in here real fast. Yeah, 
Okay, now somewhere over here I had pumpkins. Like I said, I may have already harvested a batch and, you know, not replaced them. Uh, not seeing anything else I can plant right now. That's fine. Okay. So many crops. Hey, Arch Play Stuff, how's it going? Um, if I have one of the mods here, if I can get a shout out for Arch Play Stuff. Next to Sweet Potatoes. Any other part, right? Yeah, it could be. Yeah, those look like they might be pumpkins. Like, not to worry about where they're located in the field, I know I have them. I can get you a shout out here in just a second. Shout out. Arch Play Stuff. Uh, for those who don't know, Arch Play Stuff. Fantastic content creator, highly recommend. Um, has also been playing some Roots of Pacha. So if you're enjoying this and you want to see someone else playing it as well, go check him out. Definitely just solid content over there. Thank you for the follow. Welcome to the stream. I mean, as a reminder, in not too long, we will be switching over to Project Zomboid. I, uh, I did get access to have Troublemaker on Undead Baron's Project Zomboid server. So I'll be popping over there for the first time. Um, and we will have it where people can throw bits at me to cause all sorts of mischief. I actually want to water these, but that's fine. You can go ahead and keep filling up your, your thing. But should be a good time. We did the uh, we did the Troublemaker Twitch integration before, but the last time I did it, I was playing solo. Uh, this time it will be on a server. I did adjust the prices from the last time because it was the first time we had done it. We tried like we kind of had a starting set for the prices, and there was some prices people felt were like right on the money. Some of the stuff felt like it was a little high, um, stuff like that. So we adjusted it accordingly. Um, so we'll see how people feel about this time. But it is multiplayer, so not only are you impacting me when I'm playing, but also if I happen to be standing next to a bunch of other unfortunate souls and people spawn a bunch of zombies on me, it becomes all of our problem. So it should certainly be interesting. Alright, so let's get the next batch of squash going. Ferment that one. I can sun dry the patties as well. So let's see, if we smoke them, that's 22, whereas the normal ones are 18. Interesting. Ooh, that dried butternut squash that's like top quality is actually really not bad at all. They're actually, it seems to be the ferment and the dry are equivalent in value. I don't have to like focus on one or the other. All right. Let's sell some of that stuff, because I have, like, legit food we've cooked. So, I don't want to spend, like, waste my stuff on that not-as-good stuff. Um, alright. So what do we work on? Do we go to the caves for more copper? Probably go to the caves for more copper, don't we? Um, yeah, probably the caves for more- well, actually, no, I take that back. Not to the caves for more copper. Let's chop down some trees for wood. For now, I chop down free trees. Let's start clearing the wood out of our field. I got a 
little bit up here. Basically, the point is, get wood. I'm mostly doing this for the wood, it's just I want to do something productive for the wood while we're at it. I think I want to have our character eat another thing right now. Uh, so what he might do is he might jump on our boar and go for a tour. See if we can't find something else useful. How are you coming along? Little by little. Um, oh wait. Troll. I was gonna have you upgrade the barn. I don't remember what I was missing. I think it was just... was it just plant fiber? It is. Oh, if I just need plant fiber. Alright. So not eating stuff? Yeah, we're eating stuff. Start clearing a field. It shouldn't actually take that long for me to hit 50. Especially with as dense as this thing has been getting taken over. And 50, done. All right, let's go get our uh, get our barn upgraded. We get everything ready and start work tomorrow. It should take me ready in about two days. Cool. Um, do you have to store fiber for animals for the winter? Um, right now I don't have a way of storing fiber, <laughs> so hopefully not. They have alluded that you get a way to store fiber, but thus far, whatever that way is has escaped me. Swap that out. And go to the grill. Keep that processing. I drop a whole bunch of stuff over here. Can you stick fiber in your storage box? Yes. But as far as, like, where I can store it that they can easily retrieve it from, um, like, like the silos, for example, in Stardew Valley, I have not. But they have implied I will get a way to store it through the, um, there's the big ancient shrine thing. 
Um, it's got a spot that's like, we learned to store their food or something like that. It was something very obvious, like, I see. Um, alright, so we got only one fur still. I need... Oh, I can get the wild sesame out here. Need more places to store things. I already have seaweed. I'm going to get back in that box. In the meantime... Make fertilizer. Okay. One feature that um that Sunhaven had that I wish this game had was just Sunhaven, whatever plant you can harvest, kind of glow. So there's like really no question about is this plant ready to harvest or not? You can just walk up and you can just like blast through the whole thing with the scythe, which you can do on this one. But um being able to just at a glance be like, ah, that's that's the stuff that I need to harvest. Cool. Like, that's, that's really helpful versus, like, wandering around, just, like, holding the mouse button, just zigzagging, looking for them. And I understand they have different graphics, but when you have, like, a giant field that I've planted different stuff at different times that don't all line up, it's kind of hard to tell. Especially ones like these um, cactus uh, prickly pears, they go from this bright red down to kind of a brown, and you can harvest them when they drop back down to kind of the brown. Um, so it's less distinct, like, it stands out less. I was going to wait for those to finish, but I'm not going to. So it's a little less obvious when it hits that point. Okay. Alright, so it looks like two more days and then I'll be able to get whatever the next, like, kitchen upgrade thing was. What is our next holiday, by the way? Um, the copper watering can is done. The clan is prospering. Uh, Grob and Matt are putting together tar some targets for hunting practice. And we still need food and just more prosperity. So let's talk to Acre and see how amazing this copper watering can is. My assumption is either going to be six or nine tiles now. which I am looking forward to tremendously. Okay, so we're starting to get a bunch of these crops knocked down. Alright, we can do the two prickly pears, put those in for wine. Okay, inspect. Ferment some corn. And we can grab the cabbage. Start making cabbage juice. To then make cabbage wine. This whole game feels like now it's about making the most appalling wine I can come up with. 
Because, like, fennel wine, cabbage wine. <laughs> uh huh. So very upsetting. Um, Alright, so. Get you out of here. Get you out of here. Do that. Do this. Yep. Mm hmm. Sure. Absolutely. Oh, you're not who I'm looking for. My bad. Give me my watering can. Here's new tool. Hopefully it lasts for years. Yay! Be amazing, please. The kids tend to argue, but they'll work their way through it. Um, okay. So we're gonna make the copper hoe. Yeah, we'll, we'll make it. It's fine. So I need 30 copper now. I actually really wanted the copper scythe more, but... I'm not willing to wait. So let's see our brand new watering can. There we go. That's what I wanted to see. At the horse statue in the caves, what does it want? I'm not familiar of there being a horse statue in the caves, so no idea. Shockingly, cabinet wine does exist in real life. It's apparently 60% cabbage, 40% grape, the more you know. Gotcha. Yeah, no, I'm not done with the caves yet. Um, let's see, so we got garbanzo beans again. Of various types, we've got corn. Got hot peppers. Alright, so we've done everything we can with that. Um, is this Neolithic man walking with a tie? Oh, I don't have a tie. What it's um I think it's just the seam on the um the bear outfit. Which I got for going to the competition day festival and beating everyone and absolutely everything. You know, just asserting my dominance over the entire clan. Letting them know that they only get to exist on my shoulders. <laughs> my character is most humble. As Pacha intended. I know, right? Yeah, more cooking. Yep. It's just taking what you get and, like, giving it slightly more value. It's a good thing to, like, be a time filler.
So here's a question. Do we get any fancy recipes to use all this flour for? Dried fruit and any flour. All right, I'm in. What have I made? New Year's pudding. Are you worth anything at all? Not really. I'm pretty sure I massively decreased the value of all of that food. Uh, so we'll be using that for eating. Why is cooking so terrible for the value of everything? Like, prepping it up to this point is fine, but the moment you actually make like a recipe in your kitchen... Yes, yeah, so, like there's a dried butternut squash, which we would have used as an ingredient. Yeah, just straight up destroyed the value. I mean, it's fine. I figure I'm going to need the stamina food anyway, so I wasn't super worried about it. Um, oh yeah, I forgot. We can sun dry the gar dried garbanzo beans. So wait, I have dried garbanzo beans, but I'm going to dry them more? Question mark? Oh yeah, I got a fancy house. Um, where is girlfriend? She's probably up here. Nope, she is in the main building. Let's put our seashells up here. So those two, because they're actually worth something. Oh, wait, take that back. You're also worth something. There we go. I adore this, thanks. I wonder what makes the Mograni healing fires different. <laughs> just the little poof with the the poncho is just adorable. All right. Oh, uh, we're at nine flowers. Try talking to her again. Okay. I suspect when we hit ten flowers, they'll have a um another interaction. I wonder how you'll get to marry her if there's like a shell or ring or something. I don't know. I don't know enough about um this era of humanity about how they signified that kind of thing. If they even had like a formal way to signify it, you know, such as jewelry or whatever. It could simply be that it's like, hey, that's such and such his partner. You know, respected kind of thing. I mean... <laughs> Apparently that's a plum dish. I put butternut squash and other stuff in it, so I don't know how it got the plum flavor. But, you know, sure, we can call it a plum dish. Alright, so I need a bunch more copper. But... First, what I'm going to go ahead and do is it is getting to be about that time, about halfway during my stream, I stop to make food happen, so I got to run downstairs and make that happen. But what we're going to go ahead and do is I will be putting words on stream up uh, during that, because that's usually like a five-ish minute break. Um, and then when we get back, we will pick up where we left off here. And when we wrap up the day after, and so I should say, like this is going to be one of those ones where I run down, I put it in the oven, and I come back up, and I run down, and I do that. I know it's more disruptive, but it's what I got available for cooking right now. But um, when we do get to the point that I finish my food, um, that's when we will switch over to Project Zomboid. And the only reason for that is Project Zomboid multiplayer does not allow me to pause, so it's a lot more difficult to deal with. Anyways, thank you so much for everyone who's been tuning in, has been lurking, chatting, following, so surprise. One second. Um, 
lurking, following, subscribing to the Bits, House and Donuts, and the raids. It all helps. I really do appreciate it. I do hope you have been enjoying the stream. For those who have not seen words on stream, it's pretty straightforward. You, uh, you type in words, and then it accepts them. And if you type in a second word, it doesn't accept it. And the reason for that is once you type in a word and correctly guess a word, you have to wait for that blue bar in the middle to go past a lock before you're allowed to put in another word correctly. You can get words wrong as many times as you want and just keep guessing, but you may only correctly guess one word until you get to the next lock. Anyways, I'll be back in just a couple minutes. In the meantime, thank you for tuning in, and I'll be back.
Okay, and I'm back. First place, we got Pretty Pictures. Make sure that's actually the music. Okay, first place, we got Pretty Pictures. Then Bianca Rose, followed by Ray Delbano. Uh, Lilac Wafers, Arch Play Stuffs. Dar Strider, myself. Uh, Nakira, Elicit NZ, and then Wow Dane. So we aren't going to do another run of this, uh, but I do need two more seconds. So I'm just going to quickly run downstairs, grab the other plate, and then I'll be right back up. So I'm in the meantime gonna go ahead and put the away scene here and I'll be right back and thank you so much for the follow I'll be uh, welcome to stream my I'll be back up my in like two seconds scratched we're okay well we, we're probably okay where is my freaking flashlight we're just gonna take some calories while we can. <laughs> I think every window is already covered. I think we're stuck in here. Well, no point sneaking, I guess. Oh, geez. spawned in and they saw us from like four directions <laughs> we survived 30 minutes i think that's the shortest lived character i have ever had <laughs> i'm not even Where the hell did you come from? That is BS. There's nothing over there. Okay, once this clip's done, I'll be back. Better not Sorry about that. Tomb got home, like, right as the game was ending. <laughs> so... What... is this horse crap? I am super frustrated right now. <laughs> All right, we'll go ahead and switch because it just takes me a minute there. All right, but thank you. It's so I do apologize about like the delay. All right, game. There we go. Oh, really? The ad? Ah, uh, sorry. Um, it's fine. We're gonna have a major things happen in the meantime, so we're just gonna run down here. I was going for copper, if I recall. But yeah, so we're gonna go and finish out this day, and then we'll do the switch over to uh, Undead Baron's Project Zomboid server, which is a light RP server. Um, and all you need to know about what light RP is in this context is just it means I'm not going to be playing as me. I'm going to be playing as a character. And that's it. Like, I don't, I don't have to go through, like, the, the hard RP value your life or don't like this or that. Um, it's pretty flexible. Um, about the only things you're not allowed to do is, like, typical just trolley being a jerk kind of nonsense. Like... I can't just indiscriminately run up and start blasting people without some reason or like that. See, honestly, don't you worry about I'm having you... Let's see. Don't you worry about having to eat when you're streaming? Literally 11 hours, you gotta take a break. Oh yeah, no, that's no problem. It's when the break goes a bit longer. Because, like, it's one thing where it's like, oh yeah, absolutely take care of yourself kind of thing. But, um, it is very, really, like, this actually is, viewership-wise, one of the, um... That was gone better. Most of the time, the moment I go on a break that's more than, like, 30 seconds... You seriously see the, the viewership drop like 10, 20%. And you get it. People are here to be entertained with whatever they want to see. You know, if you're not providing the content they're looking for, they will seek it out. And I don't fault anyone for doing that either. But it is, it is the unfortunate reality of streaming. Yep. Like, like if you... When you hang around the channel... Just watch when you go on, like, the words on stream break. It's not always. Sometimes I have, like, raids or sometimes other streams will end and all that and people pop in. But by and large, usually when I go for, like, the five-minute break, viewership will drop, like, 10-20%. A lot of that stuff isn't super uh, consistent ever, though, so... 
I didn't even bother checking down. I should have done that. Okay. Uh, actually... Actually, there's a whole area down here we did not check. I wonder what's down there. Probably spiders. Can I break that? No. Oh, there's a whole extra area off the side. Okay. Oh, yeah, we're probably not going to get... Just shuffling that for my own sake. But yeah, now it's, um, there's a number of things. Like, even when I switch games, um, I almost never switch games and immediately have an increase in viewership. Usually it's a dip in viewership, even if the other game isn't doing well. Okay, so the next thing is going to be clearly a bear. Um, and I'm assuming the bear, I'm going to be able to do some, like, push the button down kind of thing. Still, we found another area that we could potentially get copper from. But, um, yeah. We went down from here. But, um, it's so like when you switch games, you always have to drop off. Now, granted, it still sometimes makes sense. Like, sometimes they'll start the stream and a game just won't be resonating. Um, and I'll switch games and you'll have, like, you know, again, the 10, 15, 20%, however many people drop off. Um, but if I switch to a game that people are generally more interested in, then after that initial drop off, you'll start seeing people, like, trickle in as they start noticing I switched games to something they're more interested in seeing me play, that kind of thing. Um, like, streaming on Twitch is almost all about consistency of just, you know, providing content of similar types, being on them almost like, steady hours, like, not being all over the place. It's one of the things that makes it, um... So being able to succeed in streaming, well, not strictly um, a thing of privilege, you kind of have to be in a position of privilege. Not have to. It's very beneficial to be in a situation of privilege to do so. Um, to be able to put in long hours, uh, to be able to have a consistent schedule which is just not things you have if you're working like customer service, that kind of thing. Your schedule tends to be all over the place, um, which makes it very difficult to build an audience because they never know when you're going to be on. Like, and taking days off hurts a lot as well. If you take more than a day or two off, you watch your... So, if you take a day or two off, like, just ad hoc, you'll usually see some, like, dip in viewership. It, it's not all bad news. Like, I found since I started taking Thursdays off and being consistent about it, that's been pretty good. But, um, taking random days off because you're not feeling well and all that, you know, people dip. Do you stream full-time? Yes. It was something I was doing just on the side while working. Um, and then unrelated to the streaming thing, I stopped working with my previous employer. We don't need to dig into that. Uh, but I stopped working with my previous employer. And then at the time, I was like, hey, the streaming thing seems to be going pretty all right. Let's just see what I can do with that. And, you know, it kept doing pretty good. All right. Run our hero fast and donate. Because, like, right now we're in a in a dip, and this is something that's been, feel been feeling about most of Twitch. Um, not all of it. Is a lot of people's numbers are down right now. There's exceptions, certainly. There always is. But by and large, viewership is down on Twitch as a whole. Which is partly not unexpected. Um, we're only now starting to ramp up to when the, um... When the next wave of viewers, like, or sorry, the next wave of games drop. 
Like, we're just starting to, like, really ramp up for the summer drops. Um, and on top of that, like, right now, a lot of people have been laid off or for a night, like, dealing with their own financial stuff. And when you run into that, one of the first things you back off on on spending when money's tight is entertainment. Like, historically, that's been true almost every single time the economy's taken a hit. Um, entertainment's one of the first things to go um, so far as spending. Um, interestingly enough, education is one of the ones that goes up, which is kind of a, a positive thing, because, you know, people get laid off from one job, they see it as an opportunity to go and train themselves up to move into another job, and stuff like that is why entertainment. Or they get scared for their job and they want to better secure their position, so they get training to make them more adaptable or to pursue a job that's in higher demand or yada yada yada. But, um, it's... It's stuff like entertainment that's being one. Carnival, let's see, the clad left early for the festival. Talk to Jag to join on the last group before sunset. Okay, so we're not going to dig into that, because as I did say, um, we were going to wrap out that day, and now we are going to be switching over to Project Zomboid, uh, where we're going to be joining Undead Baron server and all that, uh, making a brand new character there and doing all that kind of stuff. All right. Um, but we're going to do that. That's going to have Troublemaker working with it, which will be in the About section where you could spend bits to, you know, teleport me, spawn zombies on me. If you're familiar with Undead Baron, you've seen what it can do. Um, for those who were here, is it just, I think it was like two weeks ago, somewhere in that time frame, I, I did Troublemaker while playing solo. Um, and it was a lot of fun. Like, it is also very, like, being genuine, is very good for, for me with the channel and all that, kind of at the moment. Um, just because... It was, um, you know, people are spending a lot less on entertainment and all that, and pretty much, pretty much everyone's kind of feeling it, um, who is in the creative space. Again, some people are, are thriving at the moment, but by and large, people's numbers are down. All right, so let's go ahead and get the title and all that up. Meet. Little Lamb, Product Zomboid on Undead Baron's Product Zomboid server with Troublemaker. 